to focus my lecture on design aspects of bats. In last lecture, we have discussed different aspects of leasing systems, the general requirements, the codal provisions for design of leasing systems. Today, we will be focusing first on the design aspects and general requirements of the battening system. Then we will go through an workout example through which it will be clear how to analyze and design a batten plates. As we told earlier that batten plates are generally provided when the compressive load are only existing. That means only compressive load means axially compressive load is coming into picture not the eccentricity. So, when the load is acting concentrically, then we can use the batten plates. Of course, if eccentricity is there, then also we can provide batten plates, but extra care has to be taken. In practice, we generally use batten plates only when the axial force is present concentrically, not eccentrically. And Batten plates means generally we use flat type of bars or rectangular type of bars as a tie which is horizontal uh, if the member is means if the compression member is vertical. That means the batten plates are placed in such a way that batten plates and the main plate will be perpendicular to each other. Right? Now apart from the rectangular bar flat type elements we can use also I section, angle section or channel section as a batten plates, but for that also certain aspects has to be taken care. In practice, we generally use flat type bars as a batten plate. Now, first we will draw one batten plates with the main plates, main uh, compressive member and how it look like we will see what are the terms, what are the parameters used for design, we will see. Then it will be clear that what are the things we have to design. Like in case of batten plates, we have to see what is the dimension, that means thickness of the plate and the depth of the plate, what will be the spacing to each other, how many battens will be required. So, all these things we will see step by step. right? So, as we I was telling that batten plates are generally used for axial load only. It consists of flat or plates, angles, channels and I sections are also sometimes used as battens. It connects the components of the built up columns in two parallel planes. So, how does it look? Let us see. Say suppose this is a section, uh, sorry elevation of the batten plate, say here one plate is given, this is another one, say this is a plate, batten plate is here, another plate say suppose it is here, say this is the right, this is a plate, another plate is. So, this is a compression member and this is another compression member and tied together through this batten plate. So, this is one batten plate and it is say these are the if we consider the I section. So, these are the central means if we consider the I section is like this say like this right and say this is the I section right and this is the wave of the section right. Now, so we can tell this as the spacing between two co compression member we can write as S 
this is called S right and this is the plate one baton plate we are providing here now this can be attached with the main plate in terms of rivet joint or in terms of welded joint or bolt joint so as per the requirement of the site and as per the availability we can make it as bolt joint or rivet joint or welded joint we know the advantage and disadvantage of the riveted joint and bolt joint and accordingly we make right now this is the plate say this is called batten plate this is the main member compression member right now this depth is called the overall depth over all depth of the batten plate which is written as d and the outermost rivet distance is called the effective depth d and spacing will be middle of this plate spacing of the batten when it is told so middle of this plate and middle of this plate cg distance of between two this is called spacing which is denoted as c right and the distance between two inner riveted group is denoted as a distance between two inner groups so from here to here this is called a right now so this i can say as a spacing between two compression member here i section has been used so accordingly it has been made now here another important point will come later that if this is y y axis and if this is x x then we have to see that r y should not be less than r x that also we have to check and generally we use that r y is equal to r x to get the maximum efficiency of the system so what we are seeing here that batten plates will be something like this where this is in fact this is called c the spacing and this is the s and this is this distance is called a this distance rivet to rivet distance this distance is called a and we have to see that r y should not be less than r x right so these are the things we have to remember so wh what we are doing basically for design of battening that means we have to decide this c spacing of the battening then this d total thickness that means overall thickness of the batten and then sorry depth of the button and then thickness thickness t of the button right so these three things are important d t and c spacing and then attachment to the main plate that means we have the main plate of this and we have to attach this button so how many number of rivets will be required what will be the uh, configuration of the rivet that we have to decide or what will be the welding length how much weld length is required so that also we have to require weld depth or weld thickness throat thickness those things we have to decide if we are going for the uh, connection in connection as welding connection right so these are the things we have to decide now in last lectures in last two three lectures we have seen how to design a built up section and after designing a built up section we have to make the lacing systems or battening system we have to design the lacing system or battening system and how we have done we have seen now here also in a similar process first we will see what are the general requirements then we will see what are the codal provisions what code are specifying so once we know the general requirements and codal provisions then we can design the system as per the codal provisions right so in today's lecture i'll try to finish all the things that means the shortly i'll discuss the coral provisions 
which is not much because it is almost similar to the lacing system. Then before that uh, the general requirements, then I will go through one example, workout example, how to design a battening system, right. So let us see. So first we will discuss about the general requirements. General requirements is in clause 5.8.1 of IS 800-1984 it is given. In fact, in clause 5.8 of IS 800-1984 the details requirement of battening system has been given and in 5.8.1 the general requirements has been given and then the design aspects has been given then the end connections have been given. So, if we see the first para that clause 5.8.1.1 what it is telling let us see it tells that compression members composed of two main components batten should preferably have their two main components of the same cross section right and symmetrically disposed about their xx axis. So, the main component members should preferably be symmetric. Where practicable, the compression members should have a radius of gyration about the axis perpendicular to the plane of the baton, not less than the radius of gyration about the axis in the plane of baton. That means, R y should preferably be greater than R x. So, these things has to preferably maintain. This is the codal provision in 5.8.1.1 it is telling. Then in 5.8.1.3 it tells that the battens shall be placed opposite each other at each end of the member and points where the member is stayed in its length and shall as far as practicable be spaced and proportioned uniformly throughout. So, this is written in the code, you can go through the codal provisions, then you will understand in better way. The number of battens shall be such that the member is divided into not less than 3 base within its actual length from center to center of connection. So, at least 3 base should be there, right. So, we do not in fact, we do not have to remember all these provisions while designing we can have a look of the codal provisions in clause 5.8.1 uh, and 5.8.2 and 5.8.3 before going to start the designing. So, we do not have to remember we can just have a look we can read that one and we can understand from there right. Next is the design requirements which is given in clause 5.8.2. 5.8.2 of IS 800-1984. In clause 5.8.2.1, the details about forces coming into baton has been described. What are the forces will come into baton? That has been told and according to that, we have to check whether that much force exerted on the baton can be taken by the baton or not. The force which are coming to the baton from the axial compression member is able to carry it by the battening plate or not that we have to check. So, first we will see what are the forces are coming, then what are the stresses due to that force is coming, whether the stresses is exceeding the permissible stresses or not that we will see and we will check accordingly, right. So, in batten also the code has suggested that this shall be designed to carry bending moment and shear arising from transverse shear force V of 2.5 percent of the total axial force on the whole compression member. So, like lacing system the transverse shear will come 2.5 percent of the axial compression, transverse shear will come 2.5 percent of the total compression member. So, V will become 2.5 percent of P where P is the axial force on the compression member is the axial force on the compression member. So, the transverse shear we can find out from this codal provision that V is equal to 2.5 percent of P, where P is the compression force 
in the compressor member. So, from this we can find out the transfer shear force. Then what we will do? Then we will find out the longitudinal shear and moment. Right? The batten shall be able to resist simultaneously a longitudinal shear of V1 is equal to Vc by Ns and moment of M is equal to Vc by 2N. This much shear and moment has to be carried by the batten. This is told in clause 5.8.2.1. So, as we know V, V which is the transverse shear force which is 2.5 percent of the compression force P. So, we can find out the V1 and M, where C is as we know C we can write in fact this is C minimum transverse distance between center of gravity of rivet groups or welding sorry C has been given here this is S yes. sorry C is center to center distance of battens longitudinally. In fact, if we see the picture we will be understanding this is called C, C is this much this is C right. So, as we know the center to center distance of battens longitudinally. So, we can find out the value of C and N is number of parallel planes of batten, number of parallel planes that means when two um, members are there then we have a batten here and opposite in opposite direction also one another batten is there generally. That means if we have a I section here and if we have a high section here we generally used to tie by this batten. So, number of batten plates are 2 right. So, here n will become number of parallel planes of batten that will become in general 2 right. Another thing is S, S is this is S, S is the minimum transverse distance between center of gravity of rivet groups or welding. That means, which one? If we see the picture, center of gravity distance of rivet or welding. This is called S. Right. So, S we can find out from here. In this way, we can find out the value of B1 and M, longitudinal shear and moment. Right. So, forces in terms of longitudinal shear and moment can be calculated from the codal provision, where code specifies that the transverse shear developed in the batten will be the 2.5 percent of the compressive force acting on the main member. So, from this we can find out the transverse shear force V, then we can find out the longitudinal shear V1 which is called Vc by Ns and the moment M as Vc by 2n, where C and n and s are given here. Then we will check, check for longitudinal shear stress and check for bending stress. Now, we know the longitudinal shear force V1 is give, means we have calculated. So, the stress we can find out tau is equal to say V1 by d into t, which is called longitudinal shear stress. So, longitudinal shear stress tau will become V1 by d into t, where d is the depth of the button. If I see this is say this is 1 and this is another member connected with the button. Now, so this is d of the button and thickness T, right. So, longitudinal shear stress tau will become V1 by D into T, where D is overall depth of the batten and T is the thickness of the batten, right. And this should not be greater than tau V A, tau V A is permissible average shear stress, tau V A is the average shear stress, permissible average shear stress, which is given in the code, right. In case of power driven soft rivet, we used to consider the permissible shear stress tau V A as 100 MPa, right. And similarly, we will check for bending stress. 
bending stress means we know the bending moment whatever it is developing now bending stress we can find out sigma b is equal to m by z and m we, we have found already and z is nothing but the section modulus which will become 1 by 6 d into t square right now this if i see sorry this will be d square into t 1 by 6 d square into t this should be less than sigma bc or sigma bt where sigma bc and sigma bt are the permissible bending stress in compression and tension respectively permissible bending stress in compression and tension respectively and this value are given in the code which is for fy250 it becomes 165 mpa sigma bt or sigma bc the permissible bending stress in compression and in tension are generally taken as 0.66 fy so from this this value is coming around 165 mpa for fe 250 means if fy is 250 means 250 grade of steel right so in this way we can check the longitudinal shear stress and bending stress so if it is okay then the assumed dimension of the baton that means d and t is fine if it is not okay then we have to increase either d or t suitably next we will find out the other things like effective length because we have to find out the permissible compressive stress in the main member then again we have to find out the radius of gyration of the main member for checking and for getting the spacing c between two batons right now in table 5.2 the effective length has been given table 5.2 of is 800 in that note in the table at the below one note is given where it is told that the effective length of the column is increased by 10 percent to get the design effective length on the case of the baton so in case of baton the effective length of the column will become 1.1 l okay this design l will become 1.1 10 percent increased the effective length whatever we are going to calculate that will increase by 10 percent if this is used for baton for calculation of baton forces and other things designing things we will calculate the effective length at 10 percent more than the actual effective length right this is given in table 5.2 of is 1984 in the note right and in clause 5.8.2.3 the thickness of baton has been defined the thickness of baton has to be 150th of the distance between the inner most connecting rivets or weld what it is told exactly that the thickness of the baton t or the tie plates should not be less than 150th of the distance between the inner most connecting rivets or welds inner most connecting rivets or welds so in this way we have to decide the thickness t so t will be minimum thickness t will be ai by 50 where ai is the distance between the innermost connected lines of rivets or welds that means as we understand that suppose this is a i section and this is another i section which are connected each other through baton plates means if we have connected through baton plates if i see the plan now this is the rivet line this is called gauge distance this is called gauge distance right this is the rivet line now this distance is called a right so a by 50 minimum thickness of the baton should be greater than a by 50 right now 
So, in this way you can decide the thickness of the button. Another thing is depth of the button. As per this clause, it told that the effective the effective depth of buttons D shall be taken as distance between end rivets or end rails as follows as distance between end rivets and or end rails. So, this D should become greater than 0.75 A for intermediate buttons. So, the effective depth of the button should become more than 0.75 A where A we have already told this is A the distance between the innermost connected lines of rivets or wells right. So, D we can find out as 0.75 A for intermediate buttons and for end button this should become D should become greater than A for end buttons ok. So, in general end buttons depth will be little greater than the intermediate buttons. This is as per the coral provision is given and in any case always it should become greater than 2 B where B is the width of the main plate this is wave width uh, sorry flange width this is called B. So, D the thickness of the button should be greater than 2 B ok. So, D is the effective depth of the button, A is the centroid distance of members and B is the width of member in plane of button ok. So, in this way we can decide the depth of the button. Then another remaining part is spacing. Spacing means if two plates are means connected through button, say suppose like this it is connected. So, suppose one button is here, another button is here. Now, spacing will be this one means middle middle to middle this C. This is one button, this is another button ok. So, in this is defined in clause 5.8.3 of IS 1984. What is it told? That the spacing of the button C be such that the slenderness ratio of the lesser main component over the distance is not greater than 50 or 0.7 times the slenderness ratio of the main member as a whole about the axis parallel to the button. That means, C by RC minimum should become less than 50 or 0.7 times the lambda where lambda is the slenderness ratio of the main member as a whole about the axis parallel to the button right. So, this is the condition from which I can find out the value of C the spacing between two button right. So, as per the clause 5.8.3 we have to find out the spacing between two buttons that is can be decided from this equation which is called C by R C minimum is less than 50 or C by R C minimum is less than 0.7 lambda whichever is lesser right. So, from this we have to find out then is the end connections end connections means buttons are connected to the main plate the compression member. So, these buttons either we have to connect through welded joint or through rivet or bolted joints. So, as per the designer's choice here or C has to choose any type of joint and accordingly has to find out the configuration of the connections right. In case of riveted joint what we will do? Riveted joint uh, we know the force what is coming. So, for a particular diameter of rivet we know what will be the rivet value. What will be the rivet value for a particular diameter of rivet and the thickness of the button we can find out the rivet value in generally rivet value can be find out from single shear and from bearing of the plate then the lesser one will be the rivet value then we can find out what is the means uh, if the number of rivets is decided then what is the force coming to that then also 
we know the CG of the rivet, we can find out from the configuration and then we have to find out what is the forces coming due to the eccentricity due to the moment. Right? Then we have to find out the resultant of the forces coming from the axial directly and from the moment. Right? And then once we find out the total forces coming due to moment and the axial force means direct force, then we have to see whether it is becoming the resultant is becoming more than the rebate value or not. If it is becoming more than the rebate value, then we have to redesign, we have to increase the number of rebate or we have to increase the dimension. Otherwise, if it is less than the rebate value, then it is okay. The assumed um, configuration is fine to carry that much load. In this way, the rebate joint can be done. In case of welding joint, certain uh, parameters mean certain guidelines have been given by the court which has to be taken care. This I am discussing. This is given in clause 5.8.4. In clause 5.8.4 of IS 800 1984, this is given. What it is told? That design the end connections to resist longitudinal shear force V1 and the moment M as calculated in the last step. So, we will design the end connection in terms of V1 and M, which already we have calculated. Then what we will do? What are the things guided by the code? That is, the for OLED connection, lap should be greater than 40. What is lap length type coming? Lap should be greater than 40. Another thing is, total length of weld at edge of batten should be greater than d by 2, where d is the overall thick depth of the batten plates. Then, length of weld at each edge of batten should be less than one third of total length of weld required. It should be less than one third of total length of weld required. And return weld return weld along transverse axis of column should be less than 40. This is also important. So, these are the criteria guidelines which is provided by the court in clause 5.8.4 of IS 81984. So, through this guideline we have to design the oil connections. That means, how do we do the design the oil connection? First, we have to see what are the forces are coming then we have to see what are the length of weld and depth of or thickness of the weld is required, we will calculate. Then we will distribute the weld in such a way that these are maintaining these codal provisions. right? So, in this way we can design. Now, I will give the details of this in the diagram, so that we can understand what are lab and what other things are telling by the code. So, this is one main member, this is the button plates, another main member here, So, these two main compression member are tied together through the batten plate. This is batten plate. Now, this has been welded. Now, this is the overall depth of the batten plate and thickness is T, thickness of the batten plate. Now, welding has been done say in this way. First, we have to decide what are the total length required for welding with a particular thickness of the weld. Then, we have to distribute properly, so that the coral provisions are maintained as well as the total lengths are also maintained. So, this is if I say, say A, this should not be greater than means less than d by 6. That means, this should be greater than at least d by 6, where d is the overall depth 
of the baton plate and this is called B and this is say again C if we say this also should not be less than D by 6 and this is the this we can say say suppose C dash this should not be less than 40 right and say this is the in our case we are using channel section we can find out the diagram accordingly this should be the diagram and if we see the plan it will be something like this it is not to scale just here if we use channel section then this will like this right so these are the channel section okay holding has been done like this now here condition is that a plus b plus c that means this plus this plus this this should not be less than d by 2 this is one right and other things are i told that a should not be less than d by 6 and c should not be less than d by 6 and c dash should not be less than 40 where t is the thickness of the plate t is the thickness okay so this codal provision has to maintain so whatever i am telling here uh, i am writing means i am diagram is given here so what we told here that you see for welded connection lap should be greater than 40 that means lap should be greater than 40 that means it should not be less than 40 okay c dash then another thing is that the total length of weld at edge of baton should be greater than d by 2 so total length of weld at the edge a plus b plus c total length this is the total length it should be greater than d by 2 okay and a and c the end return should be at least d by 6 that also has to be maintained okay so with this codal provisions we have to design the oil connection for the baton plate so whatever we have seen in case of design of baton plate that certain general requirements are there which we have to follow and certain guidelines for design of baton plates are there in the core provisions guidelines means what should be the minimum thickness of the baton plate what should be the minimum depth of the baton plate and what should be the minimum spacing of the baton plate that has been given in the code maximum spacing of the baton plate okay so from the codal provision we can find out these three thickness of the baton plate depth of the baton plate and the spacing of the baton plate then other things are that we have to check the longitudinal shear stress whatever developing in the baton plate and the uh, stress due to bending we have to check and we have to check whether the, the developed stresses are less than the allowable stress or not if it is less than the permissible stresses then it is fine otherwise we have to redesign redesign means we have to increase the dimension of the baton plate in terms of either thickness or in terms of either um, depth then what we will do then we will go for end connections end connection means either we will do the connection between baton and the main plate with the riveted joint or bolted joint or welding joint so in case of riveted joint we know what are the loads are coming and what are the what is the uh, diameter of the rivet so accordingly we can find out the configuration of the rivets that means where the rivet should be placed how many rivets should be placed and what should be the capacity of the rivet group we can find out and if we go for welding joint then we have to see what will be the length of weld is required for the uh, forces coming into picture then we have to maintain the coral provisions 
that what will be the distribution of the welding length and return means return weld lap length all these things we have to decide as per the color provisions and we have to see whether we are maintaining or not. So, in this way we can design. Now, we will go through one example through which we will be able to clear the how to design a packing plates. So, this example has been worked out in previous lecture that a built up compression member having effective length of 6 meter and carrying an axial compressive load of 1000 kiloton design the member using battens. In last workout example, we have done same thing using lacing plates. So, here what we are seeing that effective length is 6 meter and the compressive load which is carrying by the member is 1000 kilonewton. And actually this example is same as done in case of design of lacing member. So, we will do the same thing for the pattern member. The advantage of doing the same problem is we can see the difference. What are the different things are coming in case of battening with respect to lacing systems. And the first step that means the design of built up sections we do not need, need to reiterate again because we have done in the last class. So, we can have a look there. right? So, in last class what we have seen for this effective length and the load we need to provide two ISMC 300 at 35.8 kg per meter back to back with a spacing of 183 millimeter. That means, two ISMC we are going to provide with a spacing of 183 millimeter. This we have calculated in last lecture. right? In last lecture up to the calculation of built up section means finding out the built up section and the spacing is common for this problem also. So, we are not going into details that. Then there we have done design of lacing using single system and double system, double lacing system, single lacing system. Here we will do the things using batten. Right? So, let us see how to do it. So, first let us draw the things which we got in earlier design and then we can go the details of the battening. Suppose, these are the battening. These are another plate. So, this is a channel section, this is another one. This I am drawing because from this configuration we need means many dimensions in our calculation of the batten plates. right? So, what are the things we know already? That is this we know the spacing clear spacing S 183 millimeter. And we know the this is the wave, right? Now, another thing is we know the rivet group as per from the SP6, we can find out the gauge distance this is called g this is given as 50 in code if we see in sp6 we will see g is given as 50 millimeter right so if we provide the rivet here right if we provide the rivet in this then we can see this distance also we can find out that means this distance right so this distance will be 183 plus 2 into 50 that means 283 millimeter so this distance also we have right 
and this channel sections we have IS MC 300 right channel section we have chosen IS MC 300 with the back to back and 183 mm spacing so these things are already calculated in last lecture now we have to find out what is the depth overall depth this we have to find out what is the thickness this we have to find out what is the number of rivet number and diameter of rivet that also we have to find out and this c we have to find out the spacing so these are the things we have to find out right so let us see step by step how to find out all this unknown so these four unknowns are there so when we are going for design of batten means first we will go for design of the built up section which is common and which are done in earlier class now we will go for design of batten in step one we will first find out the spacing of the batten spacing c so as per the codal provisions c should means this expression should be maintained that c by rc minimum should be less than 50 or 0.7 times lambda whichever is less so first we can see c should be less than 0.7 lambda into rc minimum 0.7 lambda into rc minimum that means 0.7 lambda into rc minimum rc minimum is given in the code means for the for this configuration what is the rc minimum we can find out which has find out in last class that is 26.1 millimeter another thing is lambda lambda is also find out in last class okay only thing is what is lambda lambda is l by r now as per the coral provision in table 5.2 it is told that length will be ten, increased by 10 percent length of the compression member effective length of the compression member will increase by 10 percent for the case of batten so here lambda will be going to increase by 10 percent so i am multiplying 1.1 with the earlier one 58.8 so this will become 1.1 into 50 so if we calculate this the c value is coming 1020.93 millimeter 120.93 millimeter so the spacing between two batten is coming from one expression that is 1020.93 millimeter another is or c should be less than 50 into rc minimum so 50 into rc minimum that is coming 1305 millimeter 1305 millimeter so these are the two so c should become lesser of these two at least so now let us provide spacing c as say 900 millimeter let us see because this the spacing of two batten should be less than these two so we are say providing say 900 millimeter right then what will do then is thickness of batten so c first is defined so c is now known that is 900 millimeter okay now it is known next we will find out the thickness of batten step 2 we will try to find out thickness of the batten now thickness of the batten we know that this should become a by 50 means minimum thickness should be at least a by 50 okay so what is a a we know we have calculated this is the a value okay so a we are finding out because gauge distance is given 50 so a will become 2g plus s so 2 into g is 50 plus s is 183 so this is becoming 283 millimeter thus the a is becoming 283 millimeter so we can find out the minimum thickness as 283 by 50 which is coming 5.66 millimeter so the minimum thickness we are also getting however we see as a provision against corrosion minimum a thickness of 6 millimeter should be provided so in any case if it is coming less than 6 also we have to provide at least 6 mm from the corrosion point of view right 
so minimum thickness we are going to adapt 6 mm suppose it is becoming say 3 then also we have to consider at least 6 mm right or more than that so let us see with the minimum thickness 6 mm so let us decide the thickness as 6 mm so what else we need we need to know the d depth of the batten plate right so step 3 will become depth of batten okay so depth of batten as we know a is basically 283 millimeter which we have calculated so from the codal provisions we know for intermediate batten d should become less than means at least greater than 3 fourth of the a so if we put the value of a as 283 then d will become 3 fourth of 283 which is becoming 212.25 millimeter right so d has to become 212.25 millimeter again for any button d should become at least 2b where b is given 100 mm means for ismc 300 we know this is b which is given in sp6 as 100 from code we can find out the dimension of this so b is given so here at least 200 d should be greater than 200 and 212 so from these two we can provide a minimum depth of say 250 millimeter the effective depth as 250 millimeter we can provide okay and if we use 20 mm diameter of rivet and edge distance of 40 mm then the overall depth will become 250 plus say edge distance is 40 so 2 into 40 so this will become 250 plus 2 into 40 is equal to 330 millimeter so the overall depth we are going to find out as 330 millimeter because we are assuming the effective depth as 250 millimeter and the edge distance as 40 millimeter so we can find out as 330 millimeter next we can find out the stresses so we are going to provide this is the thing that 330 by 6 mm batten plates at a 900 mm center to center so this is the outcome we got right so here d we are going to decide 330 mm so all the things we found thickness depth and spacing now we have to find out number and before that we have to check the stresses okay so in step 4 we will check the stresses due to longitudinal shear and moment so we can find out first transverse shear v is equal to 2.5 percent of the total load this is p so this is becoming 25 kilonewton 2.5 percent of 1000 kilonewton right so 25 kilonewton now moment in batten plates due to transverse shear we can find out from the formula m is equal to vc by 2n so v is 25 and c is 900 millimeter that means 0.9 meter and 2 into n n is the total number of parallel planes that is 2 so if we calculate we will get 5.625 kilonewton meter so moment we are getting next we are getting the longitudinal shear v1 this will become vc by ns so v is 25 c is 900 mm and n is 2 and s is spacing that is 283 millimeter so from that we can find out the longitudinal shear v1 as 39.75 kilonewton so longitudinal shear stress also we can find out which will become v1 by dt now if we put the value of v1 and d and t we will get the value as 20.08 newton per millimeter square which is less than tau va in this case tau va is 100 newton per millimeter square for the steel as we are using fy 250 with okay so tau v is 100 newton per millimeter square that is why longitudinal shear stress whatever coming as 20 is less than tau v so it is okay similarly the bending stress in batten due to transverse shear 
can be find out that is sigma b is equal to 6 m by t into d square 6 moment is this one and t is 6 mm and d is 330 ok. So, from this I am going to get as 51.65 Newton per millimeter square which is less than sigma b t or sigma b c which is 165 Newton per millimeter square. So, from this we can find out that this is also ok. So, from stress point of view these are quite ok this also we can make. Next what we will do now we will go for design of end connections. So, in case of end connections if we use 20 mm power driven shop rivet then in single shear the rivet value will become tau v f into pi by 4 d square tau v f into pi by 4 into d square where d is the gross diameter 21.5. So, this is coming 36.3 kilo newton and in bearing this will be sigma p f into d into t. So, if I put the value sigma p f as 300 d is 21.5 and t is the thickness 6. So, this is coming 38.7. Hence, the river value will become lesser of these two that is 36.3 kilo newton. So, river value also we are going to get. Next what we will do? Next direct force on each rivet right. So, for that we have to start with some number of rivet. So, let us provide 4 rivets at 80 mm center to center distance 4 rivet at 80 mm center to center distance. So, direct force on each rivet we can find out because 4 rivets are there. So, F A will become R by 4 where R is we found earlier R right longitudinal shear 39.75. So, R by 4 this is coming 9.44 kilo newton. So, direct force on each rivet is coming 9.44 kilo newton. Similarly, force due to moment on n rivet that will be becoming m r by summation r square. So, now if we provide 4 rivets says this is the baton plate say 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, right and this distance has been taken say 40 sorry 80 mm and so this is 40 and then again this is 40. So, this is the way sorry this, this will become 45 ok we will calculate this one yeah 45 ok. So, we have to find out the distance of extreme rivet that will become 40 plus 80. Okay. So, m into r this is the r this extreme distance of extreme rivet by summation r square 2 rivets in each side. So, 2 into 40 square plus 2 into 40 plus 80 whole square. So, this will become 21.09 kilo newton this can be rather f m force due to moment. Okay. So, 21.09 kilo newton. Hence, resultant force at, at n rivets will become, so F r will become root over F m square plus F r F a square. So, the resultant is coming 23.11 kilo newton, which is less than the rivet value. Rivet value was calculated as 36.3 kilo newton. So, the resultant force is coming less than the rivet value. So, it is ok. So, the design is ok. So, we can use that 4 number of 20 mm diameter of rivets at 80 mm center to center distance and with an edge distance of 45 millimeter that we calculate because total depth is 330 minus 3 into 80 equal to 45. So, we are going to get 45 mm. So, if we see now the details of the design we will see that here number is 4 numbers of 25 rivets. 25 diameter of power driven soft rivets and 4 numbers means say suppose this 4 let us provide and this rivet distance will become 80 and this edge distance will become this is this will become 45 right. So, in this way we are going to get all the details. So, with this I like to conclude the 
today's lecture as well as the chapter of compression member in next class we'll start a new chapter thank you very much